And I will invite uh, Mr. Rob Cunningham, Senior Policy Analyst with the Canadian Cancer Society. Mr. Cunningham. Chair, Honourable Senators, uh, I'm a lawyer and Senior Policy Analyst with the Canadian Cancer Society. Merci pour l'opportunité. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. We acknowledge Health Minister Philpott for her strong work in advancing tobacco control. We support Bill S-5 and have a number of recommended amendments to improve the bill. But first, regarding plain packaging. This is a key tobacco control measure, including to protect youth. Canada will join the six countries that have finalized plain packaging requirements, Australia, United Kingdom, France, Ireland, Norway, Hungary, and the many more in progress. The package is the most important type of tobacco advertising that remains in Canada today. Tobacco is addictive and lethal and should not be sold in packages made to be more attractive, period. Imperial Tobacco stated, quote, there is no evidence to support plain packaging. In fact, the evidence is overwhelming. Beside me is an evidentiary compilation, an extensive evidentiary compilation submitted to this committee, available for your review and consideration. The compilation contains abundant studies worldwide that provide compelling evidence that plain packaging would be effective. There are more than 140 studies, reports, and other evidentiary items specifically on package promotion and plain packaging, not to mention a vast number on package warnings and other related packaging aspects. And distributed to you is the table of contents. And you can uh, I identify the authors, uh, the peer-reviewed scientific journals in which studies have been published, and uh, that is one reference in terms of the breadth of the evidence that is available. Of course, plain packaging would be effective. Why else would the tobacco industry be so opposed? Regarding contraband and plain packaging, the industry claims should be disregarded as being completely without merit for the numerous reasons as has been previously outlined. Turning to amendments, first for tobacco related amendments. An amendment should ban tobacco manufacturer sales promotions targeting retailers, such as bonuses for achieving higher sales volumes. Why should such why should that type of promotion be allowed? As well as chances to win sports and entertainment tickets or Caribbean vacations. These promotions are happening today, but they should simply be banned. Quebec has had a ban since November 2016, and the same provision should be adopted federally. An amendment should ban menthol in all tobacco products. Federally, at present, menthol is only banned in cigarettes, most cigars, and blunt wraps. This means there's a loophole whereby menthol is allowed in all other tobacco products, such as roll-your-own tobacco or so-called, quote-unquote, pipe tobacco, recently introduced into the market to get around the menthol cigarette ban in some provinces. Although some provinces have banned menthol in all tobacco products. Bill S-5 should do so federally as well, in all tobacco products. Menthol soothes the throat, masks harshness, and makes it easier for kids to experiment and get addicted. An amendment should provide regulatory authority to increase the minimum age higher than 18, as found in the current bill and current legislation. Health Canada included a minimum age of 21 in its recent consultation paper launched in February. In the U.S., there is a minimum tobacco age of 21 in California, Hawaii, in at least 225 municipalities, including New York City, Boston, Chicago, and many others. This would reduce youth smoking. An amendment should provide regulatory authority to allow health warnings directly on products themselves, on tobacco products themselves, in addition to packages, just as the bill currently provides for vaping products. An amendment should ban tobacco brands and logos from appearing on lighters, matches, and other non-tobacco goods. For example, Demori lighters are displayed on countertops and undermine plant packaging. With the Chair's permission, I can show some examples of this uh, during the questions. An amendment should provide regulatory authority that some or all of the provisions of the Act could in the future apply to water pipe equipment and herbal water pipe products. Water pipe use, hookah, is on the increase among youth and needs a response. An amendment should provide regulatory authority to ban smoking in specified federal outdoor areas, such as an entrance to a federal building, Cavendish Beach in PEI, or a children's playground in a national park. These are existing gaps federally at the moment that are covered typically by most provinces. For e-cigarettes, we recognize that e-cigarettes are less harmful than conventional cigarettes and that e-cigarettes have both potential benefits and potential risks. 
Legislation and regulation such as Bill S-5 is needed to deal with those risks, such as youth use, industry tactics that undermine smoking cessation, and appeal to ex-smokers and non-smokers. <laughs> Many of the bill's cigarette advertising restrictions are surprisingly weak compared to other jurisdictions. An amendment should ban all lifestyle advertising. Examples could include tropical beaches, sports cars, glasses of wine by a romantic sunset. The Canadian Vaping Association, in their testimony before this committee, supported a lifestyle ban. An amendment should clearly specify that the only advertising allowed is information advertising or brand preference advertising. This is reasonable. Again, the Canadian Vaping Association testified it wanted advertising limited to information advertising. An amendment should specify that e-cigarette brands and logos should not appear on t-shirts, baseball hats, backpacks, or other products not related to e-cigarettes. Kids can become walking billboards at their schools. An amendment should further curtail special sales promotions, such as e-cigarette purchase, giving a chance to win a free vacation, or tickets to a rock concert. Again, these have lifestyle associations. An amendment should restrict the location of permitted advertising to the same permitted locations as for tobacco, and thus reduce reduce youth exposure, though still permitting advertising to adult audiences. At present, there is no restriction on location whatsoever in the bill. Advertising is allowed on TV, radio, billboards near schools, everywhere. The European Union bans e-cigarette advertising on TV, radio, and many other places, as you've heard. New Zealand will ban e-cigarette advertising except at retail. Quebec has legislation now in place for e-cigarettes that uh, has strict restrictions although it is permitted at retail and is permitted in publications with a certain, certain adult readership. So Quebec goes far beyond what is currently in the last five. An amendment should provide regulatory authority to further restrict e-cigarette advertising and promotion to provide future flexibility. The government intends and needs flexibility to respond, but the bill as drafted does not contain it. We urge support for Bill S-5 and for our proposed amendments. Bill S-5 is a critical component of a new strengthened federal tobacco control strategy. Thank you again for the opportunity to appear. Merci.